Hello all, my name is Thierry Epasa and I will present a very fun topic today, ETAP's powerful graphical interface and presentation tools make power study reports fun and easy to grasp. A little bit about me, I am the Director of Electrical Engineering at EEE Engineering LLC, which goes by the acronym EEE. Pasa Electrical Engineering. I graduated from Lamar University with three bachelor's degree, mathematics, computer science, and electrical engineering. This is why I earned the self-title of three-phase engineer, A, B, and C. I have a master's degree in power system engineering from the University of Houston. EEE handles several types of work, including relay programming, power study, power system audit, and so on. Much of my work focuses on short circuit coordination arc flash studies, also known by the acronym SCAF. The acronym is fairly used here in America. The middle C stands for coordination, but it also implies protection and coordination. You will hear the acronym SCAF during this entire presentation. Although PowerFlow is not part of the acronym, it is a study also included. But most of my customers opt not to do PowerFlow studies. As I mentioned earlier, I deal a lot with SCAF. I not only perform the studies, but I also get contracts to review SCAF studies from other contractors. In some cases, I even had to sit down with people and show them how to read the report. I see significant hurdles when performing those study. How do you translate your findings or documentation to the client? We need to try to get the owner's buy-in and understanding of what we do. It is not enough to tell someone, here are my conclusion, here are the reports. We need the equipment owner to understand their facility system and to buy in. Scale studies may be low to high degrees of complexity, depending on facility. However, most CAF reports are high degrees of complexity for most facility owners. The main challenge is in translating SCAF reports to facility owners. First challenge. SCAF reports should be in, uh, could be incredibly long. The longest report I've seen so far is 5,000 page, pages. Let's be honest. If I sent you a 5,000 pages report, what would be your first reaction? It would scare you. You would most likely not read it thoroughly. You may not even read it at all and just believe everything I verbally say. Second challenge. Facility owners are often not SCAF experts, safety workers, electricians, facility supervisors, and even electrical engineers. Those people understand electrical stuff, but are not ingrained in the details of SCAF. Moreover, most people assume that electrical facility power engineers should understand how to read and interpret those CAF studies reports. However, this is not the case. Why? Electrical power engineers who work in facility are often overwhelmed because they manage several projects. They may have the skills, but they don't have the time to hone those skills in one specific area of expertise in power engineering. This is where the ETAP graphical tools solve these problems. Interactive live report. When I finalize SCAF studies, I call the entire team and set up a 30 minute meeting. I summarize the studies via an interactive discussion about the ETAP model. This is where ETAP shines. Let's go through an example. Imagine I finished performing SCAF studies for this facility. 
After sending the final report, I am in a meeting with the electrical engineer, electrical personnel, facility supervisor, safety workers, and others. Remember, my audience is not SCAF expert. Even most electrical engineers who work in facility do not have expertise in grabbing the detail of SCAF. The goal is to make people understand SCAF studies because few people read the SCAF report thoroughly. Interactive visuals are the best tool to make people enjoy this report and make it vibrant. When facility owners understand what we do in SCAF, they are willing to do what it takes to solve potential problems. In ETAP, you can have multiple windows in the same ETAP project. I use the word window, but each window shows a presentation. Here is the best part. You can run different study modes in each window and even personalize the layout in each window without changing components. So, we will open multiple windows that correspond to SCAF. Short circuit window 1, arc flash window 2, coordination and protection window 3, and the window 4 will have the base one line with no studies. I changed the color to window 4 layout. It has a black background. I did so for easy visual to recognize the original base presentation. That is so cool. We will superpose all those windows. I want to stress that the ability to have those four windows with different studies should not be taken for granted. I use several ETAP competitors, but none of them have those features. So this is a luxury. Window 1, top left, short circuit window. Notice that all the components are identical between the short circuit window and the original one line. However, the view is different. For example, the utility in the short circuit presentation is on top of the bus. However, in the base case presentation, the same component is on the left side of the bus. The base case presentation reflects the identical layout from the facilities as built one line drawings. But since we will be discussing short circuits, I want to make the drawing top down so that it is easy for the audience to follow. Another layer difference, look at sub 2B. In the base presentation, there is a really OCR around Gen 1. In the short circuit studies view, there is no really OCR around Gen 1. I hate the really. You can do that in any ETA presentation without changing the original base presentation. Why did I hide OCR in the short circuit view? Relays have no impact on short circuit studies. To simplify the layout for my audience, I had the relay in this view. We will only focus on components that matter during short circuit studies. Now we are going to stay with this in this window for several minutes. Although we will do short circuit, I will run load flow to show my audience how current and power flow to the equipment. Everyone loves to see power flow. It is fun. I click on the power flow group, then run load flow. We can see kilowatt flows from the utility, from the turbine, all the way down to the loads and other substations. We can switch the data and see the amps. 42 amps from utility and 1338 amps from wind turbine. 
at this point, the audience has a basic understanding of their facility, the power source, and their laws. Everyone is focused. We are on the same page electrically. By the way, the yellow part shows the grounding grade. We have a ground grade as sub 2A and another one as sub 3. We are now switching to short circuit mode. Short circuit. Now we will run short circuit three phase device duty. Instead of reading the report, we will highlight the result here on the ETAP one line. This is where another cool feature of ETAP shines data blocks. This short circuit view shows several results. I have an arrow showing momentary symmetrical fault currents. However, it does not yet translate to my audience. Are those currents telling me something? Is the facility rating adequate for short circuits? Is it inadequate? I cannot confirm from this. So, I customize cool data blocks. This is another amazing feature of ETAP, the ability to customize data block. I named the data block Cherry SE and customize it. Now, I enable those data blocks. For today's video, I am only showing the major bus data blocks. But when I am in the facility meetings, I show all the major components, bus, breaker, transformer, and so on. Notice the color patterns, blue, red, and green. All are customized for easy visual. Blue is for the equipment name. Green is for existing rating, and red is system data. Another customization I did is the naming of the data. The term boss rated ASIM is my custom name. ETAP did not call it as such. The original name is ASIM or MSKA. I customize it so that a general audience could easily know what it means. I also customized the name equipment name. Originally, it was ID. A similar process for the third data. Let's look at the main bus. The bus is rated for 20 kA, but the system could produce 36 kA. We have an issue. The bus is not adequately ready to handle the worst case fault scenario. 20kA less than 36kA, not good. Do you see the pattern? The green on top should be higher than the red on the bottom. Same for peak current. The ready peak of the equipment bus should be higher than the worst case scenario. This is what we be flag on the report when they read it. Let's look at sub 2A. The bus is rated for 37 and the system can produce 10.2. No issue, 37 kA is greater than 10.2. Sub 2B, bus is rated for 37. The system can produce 16.8, no issues. Sub 3, the bus is ready for 19 kA and the system can produce 43. Not good. We have an issue. 19 kA is less than 43. We are done. Now the audience has a better grasp of what short circuit studies do. I can now influence them without authority to try to solve the findings. Next, we move on to coordination and protection windows. Notice the difference in layout between the short circuit studies and the coordination windows. I inserted some breakers in the one line. Unlike short circuit, we need breaker devices for this study. 
Do you see that you don't even have to read a long report to see breaker settings? Everything is visible on the one line. That is fantastic for the audience. Live is made easy. Due to the presentation limit today, I won't delve into the protection part. However, I will show you coordination. ETAP has a cool feature called sequence of operations. We will see if the protected devices are coordinated. I placed a three-phase fault at the main bus. You can see the first breaker that opens the fault, CB1. That is what we want. We are coordinated. However, there are three additional paths for faulted current. This sequence list will show you when each breaker opens and we can then conclude if we have appropriate coordination on those breakers. There is a fault at sub 2A. We have CB11 which opens first. This is good coordination. CB12 also opens at the same time which is great coordination. Fault at sub 2B, CB4 opens, great coordination. We also have CB10, which opens at the same time, perfect. Fault at sub 3, CB10 opens, not good, why? If CB10 opens, we will remove the fault, but we will also lose sub 2B. It is not necessary to lose power to sub 2B to remove that fault. We want the first breaker to be CB8. We have a miscoordination. Now we know how our flaws and can attempt to fix them. Done. Beautiful. There is no need to read 5,000 pages reports. Now we move to ArcFlash. As I did with the short circuit window, for this presentation, I will only fold the major bus. I open my ArcFlash presentation. ArcFlash group, run ArcFlash REE 1584. Look at this window. Wonder what it is. I guess I'm just going to click OK. I see a bunch of currents and symbols. It means nothing to my general audience. I am customizing cool data blocks again and call it them arc flash theory. Now we can see all the data. Notice something cool. Calories, clearing time, and arc flash boundary. Those names did not come from the software. I customized them as such. Sub to a 13.4. Sub 2B, 3. Sub 3, 20 calories. Moreover, you can also see all the extra data, working distance, clearing time, and so on. Main bus, 501 calories. Whoa, what is going on? How is it even possible? But wait, look at this. You see on the one line, the calc method shows Lee method. Why is it not REE 1584 2018 like the others? Hmm. Yes. It is easy to catch errors now. The beauty of ETAB graphical tools makes SCAF reports fun via a 30 minute video presentation. I don't expect 80% of people to read and understand SCAF report. But I know those 80% of people will enjoy those ETAP final interactive videos. Thank you for joining me. I am Thierry Passa and I approve this message.